Hi guys, it's Mrs. C here. It's so hard to not say with cycle one week, whatever after <laughs> after that. But um, I just wanted to do a quick video on um, kind of update on my health because I have people ask about that occasionally. I did a video a few years ago talking about homeschooling with um, autoimmune. And so I got a lot of things to praise God for and I wanted to do a video about that. And also um, now that I'm doing better, just kind of give um, a few tips, I guess, um, just some things that I've learned as a reminder to myself, but also to help anyone out there who's um, homeschooling with chronic illness. Um, and maybe you are uh, just starting out noticing symptoms. Maybe you've just been diagnosed. Maybe you've been living with it for many more years than I have. Um, but I uh, just wanted to do a video to help those out there who um, just need to know they're not alone. So, um, I will start out just really brief overview of my like illness history. Um, in 2015, I, uh, found out I had thyroid cancer and, um, so I had my thyroid out, had a radioactive iodine treatment and then was considered like cleared. I didn't have any more signs of cancer. Um, uh, thankfully thyroid cancer is a very easy cancer to treat, um, which I'm very thankful for. Um, later that year, um, I had a lot of like getting my thyroid levels right. So there was a lot of things going on, um, with that, just trying to get those all balanced out. If you have thyroid issues, you know what a pain that is. Um, finally got everything good and I did really well for a few years. And then I started having, um, symptoms in, I think it was 2017, just random, like would wake up and my fingers would be kind of like swollen and feel like really stiff and achy. And I was um, a hairdresser. And so a lot of that I attributed to like carpal tunnel, like I've just overused my hands. Um, you know, I had little kids at the time picking them up. Um, so just kind of passed it off as that. Um, and then continued on for the next few years, just having random bouts of joint pain. Um, as it went on, it, the joint pain would be in different places. Um, it would, I, I would call it like migratory joint pain. I would wake up one morning and like my whole, like my right knee, my right ankle, my right foot would just be in tons of pain. Um, you know, I'd make it through the day, go to bed, and then I'd get up the next day and like it'd be my left shoulder and my elbow and rest and just it was very random where it would be. It would last for a couple days and then it would go away. And I'd be like, oh, it's fine. Um, so during that time, I um, was seeing a doctor. We were trying to figure out what was going on. Um, I didn't have a ton of other symptoms other than like fatigue, but you know, I was like, I've got three kids, I'm homeschooling, I'm working, and of course I'm gonna be tired. Um, and did it for the first, I would say probably year, like really put a lot of effort to figure out what was going on because it was so random and I just passed it off as a lot of stuff. So fast forward, um, 2019, we were going through an adoption and my symptoms were starting to get to the point where they were really affecting my everyday life pretty frequently. Um, I was generally in a decent amount of pain every day. Um, just a lot of stiffness in my joints and achiness, um, when just on a normal basis. And then I would have what I would call flare ups where there would be periods where I would have to crawl up the stairs because it was just too painful to try and walk normally up the stairs. Um, there would be times when I couldn't pick things up like a jug of milk. I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, a lot of... Um, most of the pain was in my feet and my wrists, um, but I would have pain other places as well. Um, in August, we adopted Olivia and we went down to Arizona for that. It was a wonderful experience. Um, I'd be happy to share about that sometime if anybody would like to hear about, hear that. But, um, I remember being down there and was just like sitting, like going to sit down. I would have to kind of like brace myself because my knees were so 
um, painful bending down and up. Like it was just so hard. So like sitting down, I would just really have to like hold on to something and lower myself gently because bending my knees and supporting my weight as I was going down was really painful. Um, I just bring all these things up because I'm doing so much better now that it's like really good for me to go back and look at like, wow, how much better I'm doing because I kind of forget how bad it was <laughs> in the time. Like you don't have time to just sit and focus on how terrible you're doing, or at least I didn't. And so you just kind of are like, well, this is what it is today and we gotta get through it. And so now like to look back and be like, man, I was so sick and I just didn't realize how sick I was. And now I realize, man, I'm, I'm so thankful for where I am. But anyway, continue on. So we got back from Arizona with Olivia and um, went right into uh, getting our campus going. I was directing that year, we went back right into orientation, getting tutor trainings going, just all of that. Plus the just the emotional stress of the adoption, which again was absolutely wonderful. Here she is, worth every bit of it. Can you say hi? Kitty. Kitty. Oh, that was yucky. All right, go play. Can you go play? So, um, we got back from that, and then we had um, CC get started and everything, and I feel like probably the stress of everything just kind of, like, hit me. Um, I tend to be one of those people that, in the moment, I don't feel super stressed, but then later, it's like my body was like, oh, you were just holding on to all of that, and now we're going to release it, and it's going to come out. So, um, around October of 2019, I started to get to the point where like daily functioning was really a problem. I remember finally going to my doctor and almost in tears and just being like, I like I cannot take care of kids. I have a baby. I could barely pick her up because my wrist hurt so much. Um like can we do something? So he put me on a steroid. It was just for like you know, like a pack of them. And so you take a whole bunch and then, you know, you kind of wean yourself off. And I remember the, like the day after I took the first big dose being like, oh, I'm a human. <laughs> I felt like I can, this is great. It was awesome. But that quickly wore off. Um, and obviously you don't want to be on that high dose of steroids for an extended period of time. So I was able to, um, get, on a low dose of steroid and that basically just kept my symptoms at a level in which I could function. I wouldn't say I was doing great, um, but it made it so that I could at least get through my everyday stuff. Um, I finally got in to see a rheumatologist in December. If you struggle with autoimmune stuff and you don't have a rheumatologist or you're like trying to get diagnosed, I'm sure you can sympathize with how difficult it is to get into a rheumatologist. Um, uh, all of us homeschooling, that's what we need to send our kids into because there are not enough. <laughs> um, I had made an appointment in April of that year and was supposed to get in in August. And of course it happened to be right in the time when we were still in Arizona with our, um, getting Olivia. And I didn't want to cancel it because, um, again, if you haven't adopted, then you wouldn't know. But a lot of times when you adopt, you have to go and stay until they release you to leave the state that you're in. And so we had to just wait and we didn't know how long it was going to take for paperwork. So we were just kind of there waiting until we got the okay, you can go home. And so I didn't want to cancel the appointment knowing that we, we could get released and I could get home and get to the appointment. Um, but we weren't able to, so I had to wait to the last minute to cancel it, which meant that like the next opening for an appointment for a new patient wasn't until December. So December, I got into my rheumatologist. We did a ton of blood work um, and came back positive in my blood work for lupus. I am, lupus and rheumatoid arthritis have a lot of similar characteristics. Um, and they have their own things, but, uh, my rheumatologist says, if I just told you my symptoms, he would tell you that I have rheumatoid arthritis, but all of my blood work shows that I have lupus. So I'm going with lupus, um, because that's what my blood work says. And I trust that. Um, thankfully the type of lupus that I, lupus that I have, um, is not one that tends to affect the organ. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, I got put on hydroxychloroquine, which if you, um, have, if that rings a bell, that was really 
I talked about a lot during COVID as a treatment for COVID, but I take that for every day for my symptoms. Started that in late December and by February we were um, moving and I was able to carry boxes up and down the stairs. Now, I would, wouldn't say that I was totally 100% great, but I was really, that, that day I just remember being like, wow, I've gone up and down the stairs like 15 times and carried boxes and I'm okay. I'm able to do that. That's, this is amazing. Um, so, so thankful that that medicine worked. Um, <laughs> my doctor had told me that it would take about eight weeks to work um, from research that I've done and actually can take more like four to six months to reach its like full effectiveness. And I am not anti-medicine at all. I'm very thankful for this medicine. I take thyroid medicine every day. Um, but if I don't have to be on a medicine, I don't want to. So, uh, there's another medicine, methotrexate that was suggested, but I wanted to wait to try that. Um, so I waited the full six months and I was doing really well. So I, that is the only thing that I take, um, for my lupus and I don't know why I call it my lupus, but that's what I always end up referring to it as. Um, so I'm so thankful, um, for that. Uh, so now I am doing really well. I mean... I don't think I'll ever be like at the hundred percent that I was at before all my thyroid stuff, really before kids. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be at that level again. So I have a new like hundred percent and most of the time I'm doing really well. Um, you know, I do notice that like, obviously if I eat really terrible, I don't feel great, but I don't think that's specific to someone with an autoimmune. Maybe I notice it differently or a little bit more, but I really think any once you're you know on the downward slope to 40, what you eat starts affecting you. <laughs> um, so I am able to do most everyday things. I do have some permanent damage in my wrist from where it attacked this joint. Um, that's really the only area that I have any permanent damage in. Um, and basically like I can't put pressure on my wrist. So like if I was to go and try to do a push up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that, which is really heartbreaking, let me tell you. <laughs> um, but that's really the only thing. Occasionally, sorry. Koopa. We have someone walking in our neighborhood, probably across, way down the street, and we must be alerted. Um, but anyway, so I'm doing really well now. So thankful that this medicine has worked for me. Um, I had an appointment with my rheumatologist and like I think a month ago and I am considered in remission, which is amazing. Uh, you're never fully cured of lupus um, or I think really any autoimmune thing, you're not ever fully considered like cured of it. It's something you have forever, but um, remission is really good. It means that I don't have any active disease right now, um, which is amazing and I'm just hopeful to stay that way and I'll just stay on this forever. Um, with the medicine that I'm taking, the, I really haven't noticed a ton of side effects um, from it. I just feel so much better than I did that I, I don't know if even I would recognize if, that it was a side effect at this point. Um, the only thing I have to do is I uh, have to do like a special eye exam because it can affect your eyes. Um, so far I have not had any issue with that and I know um, I actually have a lady who's been on it for a really long time who also has lupus that um, is a dear friend of mine and uh, she's never had any issues so um, hopefully I will be able to just stay on it and be good. So um, so that's just really quickly and in a nutshell um, my story with autoimmune. Um, there's way more other things that I could tell you about but I don't want to bore you to tears with that. Um, so really quickly I just I wrote down a few things that I've kind of learned or ways that I've figured out that I need to help myself and um, be stay like at a good level where I can function and do everything. Um, and the biggest one, which is the hardest one for me is to not overcommit because I like to do stuff. <laughs> um, and I like to help people and I like to be needed and I like to be available and be the person that says, yes, I will be there and I will do that. And so I've really had to learn to not immediately go, yeah, I can totally do that um, because that is my natural instinct. Um, but I have 
done that too often and just regretted it so much um, and had to pay for it later or like the, my family has to pay for it later. And so I have learned to say, you know, I would like to do that, but I just need to take a minute and look at my schedule and just consider if that's going to be something that I can manage that week or whatever. Um, I feel like it feels wrong to me to do that, but I know that I have to do that. Um, so if you are a person that is like me and you like to do all the things, I think that will probably be, that's probably the biggest struggle for me now that I'm feeling better. Um, because if you are a person who has had periods of chronic illness or are currently in chronic illness and you have really good days, on those good days, you want to do all the things because you don't feel like doing them the other days. And there was such a long period of time where I didn't, I mean, not only like could I not get up the stairs, I couldn't fix dinner for my family. Like doing laundry, I couldn't pull laundry out of the washer to put into the dryer because my hands were so sore. So like, I want to be able to do those basic things, but I also want to help other people because I have so many people helping me. Um, so it's just hard to find a good balance. Um, so I, I would just encourage you to not overcommit yourself. Take a moment, really look at your schedule, really think, okay, can I handle doing all of this? Um, and then also once you agree to do something, especially if it's a, a bigger thing, um, giving yourself time to recover after it. So when we are in our CC year and we have community day on Wednesday, I am very intentional about not planning anything for Thursday. Um, and it's hard because Thursday tends to be a day that there seems like people always wanna do stuff on Thursdays. And um, I have to be very intentional about that and make sure that I'm not over planning myself because then Friday I will be too tired to do school. I will be wiped out. I won't have the energy to, you know, get my kids going because I'll barely be able to get myself going. It's not that I am like sick or in pain. It's just my energy level is not the same to if I have things two days in a row. So, um, and then let's see, um, yeah, so I, when I was in more active disease, one of the things that I did with homeschooling was when I was not in a flare and I had more, um, energy and mental capacity, well, um, I would take that time and really try to plan out and prep out as much as I could for our homeschool. So like sitting down and writing out a schedule, you know, not a schedule, but writing out like a reading plan so that when we got to that day, if I wasn't having a great day, I didn't have to find all the books and, you know, combine everything together and think about what we were doing. It was just already laid out for me. Um, there's also a really great um, a website for uh, CC where, um, I don't know if it's actually being run anymore. It used to. I think I saw somebody about it, but um, I'll try to find it and put it in the link or in the description of the video. But um, they connect a lot of TV shows to what we're learning in the CC memory work for different weeks. And so I had that printed out for myself so that if I was really not feeling well that day, we could watch a few shows on TV and still get some education in there. Um, so... I call that my like good, when I have a good day plan, like here are the 10 things I want to get done when we're having a good day. We're going to do our read alouds. We're going to do maps. We're going to do um, a field trip. We're going to go exploring. We're going to draw, do art and read poetry. Like, so I had a good day plan. And then I had, we just need to survive today plan. We need to do math. We need to do some reading and we need to listen to memory work. That's all we have to do today. Um, and I found that that was really good for me to have because I didn't feel like I wasn't getting anything done. And I set my expectations of this is the only things that we have to get done. And then if we can do more, awesome. But I have to, you just have to kind of set your expectations at an appropriate level. Um, and then I just want to encourage you and remind you, because this is something that I think any homeschool mom probably struggles with. I don't know. There's some of you out there who are much better people than I am probably and don't have the same struggles that I do at all. But it took me a few years to really wrap my brain around this, that I have made the commitment to homeschool my kids. That is something I've chosen to do and that I want to do. And that has to come first. So there was a lot of 
years where you could, you know, I, I only had one that I was homeschooling. She was younger. It was kindergarten. It was just first grade. Like we can do school tomorrow. I was very good at doing school tomorrow. Um, and so I've, I've realized though that homeschooling has to come first and it's okay for that to come first. Um, this is what I'm doing. This is my job now and I need to do this job really well. Um, and there are some of you out there who's like, well, duh. <laughs> I'm a thick skull, okay? I don't know. It just, I I think I just thought I could do all the other things as well. And there were times when it was easy to kind of put this last um, or put it later. And I just really had to like have a heart to heart, come to Jesus moment with myself that this is what I am doing. And Yes, it is good to teach Bible class. Yes, it is good to tutor. Yes, it's great to take meals to people. It's good to host and have people over in your home. It's good to um, do a Bible study out in the community. There's a lot of good things you can be doing, but they are not gooder <laughs> than what you've already committed to do, which is homeschooling your kids. And you have got to put that first and make sure that is getting done first and that your energy is going there first because our, our kids deserve that. Um, and if you are putting your energy in other things and then you're not having the energy to do this, then one, your kids aren't getting what they need to, but then I think you start to have like this incredible like guilt. Oh, at least I did. Like, I'm not doing a good job. I'm not doing this like I'm supposed to. And it's not that you can't, it's just, you have to reprioritize things. So, um, now that I have accepted that mentally and I'm in that state, like I'm so like, I just breathe so much easier. I feel so much better about our homeschool. Um, I, I have put aside the guilt from not doing other things because it's, it's not that I am not doing a good thing already. I think that's hard. I think once you've been homeschooling for a little while, like it doesn't feel like you are doing something different or good, but this takes a lot of time and energy and it's okay for, for that to be what your energy is used for and to not do other things, even though they're good things. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully that's helpful. Um, and then the second to last thing is to ask for help or to find ways to help yourself. Um, one of the things that I've done recently and I'm doing well, like I said, but I've done recently that I wish I had done before, um, was like, I've just every once in a while, I've only done it twice actually, as I've used a laundry service, um, where they come pick up the clothes, they've washed them, fold them, bring them back to you all folded. Um, it is amazing. <laughs> Um, now we are, we're not in a financial position where I could do that every week. And, and a few years ago, we weren't in a financial position where I could do that at all. So I don't say that. And then to have, you know, alienate a lot of people who are like, well, I don't have the money to do that. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say if there are, um, places where you can take advantage of help, whether it's family members or young teens at church that, you know, might want to get some experience babysitting. Maybe they're not ready to be on their own, but they would like to come be a mother's helper. Um, whether it's giving yourself permission to take a nap while your little ones nap, um, thing, things like that. Use the help where you can, where you can find the help. Don't not use help. I, again, I'm a doer. And so asking someone to help me is much harder for me to do, but also acknowledging like, why wouldn't I make things just automatically easier for myself by taking advantage of these things that I have at my disposal. So, you know, I don't feel bad about using uh, the dishwasher. I don't feel like I have to hand wash everything. So why, if I have the ability to have somebody do laundry for me and that really helps me out and makes me a better person because I'm able to get done all the homeschooling extras that we have when we have a lot of extra things going on, or I'm able to complete these few projects that I've been needing to get done around our house because we just moved then take advantage of those and, and don't feel guilty about, about that. Um, there are plenty of people who are perfectly healthy and not dealing with all the health issues that we're dealing with, but take advantage of those all the time. So you don't need to feel bad about that. Um, and then the other thing, which I, I think I'll do a separate video on this, but is using technology to help yourself because I have, I'm pretty clear in my brain these days, but I had periods of intense brain fog where 
Um, and if you've not really had brain fog, it's so hard to describe, but it literally is like walking through fog trying to function. Um, it's not just you walk into a room and you're like, oh, why did I come in this room again? I mean, that's part of it, but it's not just that. There is a lot of, you just don't, I, there are time times in those few years where I don't remember. I will have pictures come up and I'm like, well, obviously I was there for that, but I have no memory of it whatsoever. So um, using technology to help free up brain space so that I'm not having to keep all of that together in my mind and I just have something that's either automatically doing it for me, automatically reminding me, um, helping keep me on track so that I'm not having to do that is really beneficial. So I'll probably do a separate video on that because there's a lot of different things that I found that have been helpful. And then the last thing, but the most important thing is to just pray. Um, prayer is where you take things to God and he can take them from you. And um, it is the place you're going to find the most solace. Um, just let it go. Um, you didn't have the best day, that's okay. Pray about it, give it to God. He knows that you're doing your best. If your best is, I kept all of my little humans alive and gave them a kiss at bedtime and that's all I was able to do today. He knows that that's your best. Um, and he, that's what he's judging you on your best, not everybody else's best. So, um, try not to judge yourself with others and take it all to God in prayer. Um, those are my few tips that I've figured out that are working and helpful for me. Um, and this video is a lot longer than my other ones, and I'm really sorry if I rambled a whole lot. Um, I, I'm not a plan my videos out person. So, um, and also sorry if you came here like, woohoo, CC video, and this is all health video. So, um, but I know there are a ton of, that of you out there who are homeschooling with uh, chronic illness, and some of you have it much worse than I did. And some of you have got this figured out way more than I do. So I don't come on here expecting there to be like, I don't put this out there to be like, you guys should care about my health and about my life and every aspect of my life. I'm, I, I don't mean it to come across that way. I hope that it comes off in a, um, you are not alone way. And here's what I've been through. And if uh, talking about that or being open about that and sharing that is helpful at all, then it will be more worth it for me to have gone through everything that I did. So if you have any questions for me, I will answer anything. I'm a complete 100% open book um, about my health. There's nothing that is too awkward to ask me or too private to ask me. Um, I would be happy to answer uh, you can email me or you can leave a comment down below and I will try to respond. Um, and hopefully this will be helpful. I, I, I don't know if it will be, but I, I'm prayerful that it will be. So um, I will be back in July. I'm going to practicum week after next. Um, and so I will try to start uploading videos for cycle two so they can be uploaded before you guys start your um, communities in case you're starting before we are. So anyway, um, I hope you guys are having an awesome summer. Take time to rest. Enjoy your kids. Don't overdo it. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys in a few weeks. Bye.